Yes. We, we might need to. How's everybody today? All right, we'll begin. We have uh, Mark has a mic, and we'll take the questions as they come. Guys, uh, who wants to begin? Right here, sir. Hi, this is a question for Coach Lehman. It's Peter May at the New York Times. I apologize if you've answered this before, but could you just kind of go back to the night of the um, selection show and how confident were you uh, that you were going to get into the field or were you still worried at that point and what things, despite what had happened? Um, well, there's, um, there's, there's a couple people that um, break down all the analytics of the NCAA tournament. So after we got knocked out by UNH, um, we were reading someone that ran 3.1 million different scenarios in the NCAA tournament. So it's basically all the different scenarios. And um, I believe we had a 20% chance to be the 12 seed. We had a 33% uh, chance to be the 13 seed. And we had a 24% chance to be the 14 seed. We only had a 7% chance to be the, the 15 seed. And we had a 2% chance to be the 16 seed. So when we read that at the, after the week, uh, you know, after we got knocked out by UNH, we felt pretty confident about being in the you know, being in the tournament. Um, all the results started to go pushing us down, pushing us down, pushing us down. So, um, you know, um, after Minnesota beat Michigan, we knew that we got locked in the tournament. Um, I immediately text Don Lucia and told him thank you and that I, I, um, I owe him lunch in Naples this year. Um, and, uh, and we felt good about it. You know, we felt, um, we felt like we had second life. Um, I read a book this summer about, uh, from Maxim Gladwell about, it's uh, David and Goliath, and, and he calls it near misses. We had a near miss, um, but we're, uh, I, th I think it was probably a good thing for us uh, because it, it increased our level of desperation and increased our level of, uh, um, it brought us together, I think, as a group. And uh, we've been playing our best hockey. Here in front. 
just kind of go off on WEI. Uh, Nate, you talked yesterday about, uh, or Wednesday, about you know how your season, you know, people thought it was a disappointment, and you turn around and kind of went under the radar a little bit. Kind of mirrors Hockey East as a whole, where people thought it was a d d down year for Hockey East, and you know some teams struggled out of conference early, and then there was a big kind of turnaround for Hockey East around the midpoint of the season, and now obviously you guys have two teams in the national championship. Was there ever a point where you thought it was a down year for Hockey East? No, I, I didn't think it was a down year for Hockey East. Um, I do think that uh, a lot of our teams struggled out of the gate um, in non-conference play. Um, and you got to give credit to the, you know, to the NCHC. I mean, they had a terrific year in non-conference play. I mean, I think they were 15-2 and two against the Big Ten, which is – that's pretty remarkable. Um, but two years ago, our league had five teams in the tournament. And I think we, had, we, we advanced – two or three teams to uh, regional finals, and then we only had one team make the Frozen Four, which was Boston College. Um, this year they had six teams get in the tournament, and, and I think uh, you know, they had quite a few advanced to regional finals and obviously two in the Frozen Four. I just think it, it, it works that way. You know, I think um, they're both really, really good leagues. Um, I would say you know, um, that you know, last year we had five teams. This year we had three. Um, I think last year they might have had three, and this year they had six. It's uh, it's really how you do non-conference. We struggled a little bit out of the gate, and um, you know, and, and we've been fortunate to win the games since then. Okay, right here. Bro. This is for uh, Ross Brian Sullivan, U.S. College Hockey Online. Uh, what allowed your team to evolve between the first half and the second half into a much more dynamic threat offensively? I think for us, it's just been sticking with the process. Uh, early on in the season, we were playing some tough opponents, uh, working hard, but just not getting the results we wanted. And I think the coaching staff and some of the older guys, for sure, we, you know, from our previous, ex previous experiences, kind of uh, and knew we just had to keep working hard in practice and, and keep bringing it. And I think uh, the biggest thing was to, to make sure we're getting pucks in the net, not trying to make the pretty play all the time. And early on, we were trying to do that, I think, too much. Um, so in the second half, it was just, you know, get back to our hockey, getting pucks in the net, being gritty around the net, and getting the second chances. And um, it's paid off for us here in the in the tournament for sure, with a lot of second chance goals. Yes. Yeah, it's Boston Globe. Nate, you had earlier said uh, to paraphrase you that you know adversity is and, and stumbles are what bring together growth. And I was just wondering from your players. You know, what have you guys learned in terms of lessons about when things didn't go right that made you realize and appreciate when it did go right? Shane? Uh, I think just sticking together. You know, uh, we're a pretty tight-knit group, and, you know, when things go don't go the right way, you have to stick together. And, uh, you know, this year we had a lot of ups and downs, and during the times when we were down, you know, we came together. And, um, you know, that's a big thing about getting back on track is keeping together and sticking to the process. Nick? Yeah, we definitely uh, stick together and uh, fight through uh, the adversity together. Did you guys watch a game? The second game last night? or Yeah? A little bit. Yeah? Little bit. How'd it go? <laughs> yeah, it was no. a good game. <laughs> <laughs> We're worried about ourselves, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you didn't watch it, Nick? Nate? Huh? Did you watch a game? No. A oh. little bit, but not much. Question for Nate, uh, Jim Conley from U.S. College Hockey Online. When you, uh, you've obviously watched BU throughout the year, but you haven't played them in so long. What are some of the things that concern you most about that team? Well, they have a great transition game. Uh, Grizzlick and, For and Fortunato do a really good job of getting up in the offense. I think they, they've got a very good power play. Um, and obviously, you know, I think they have the premier forward in the country. John. John Powers, Boston Globe, for Nate. The press conference after this one will be NCAA State of the Game. One of the issues that's going to come up is about going back to other regional sites. You uh, talk about how you feel about that and how much of a benefit was it for you, if, if not on campus, to at least be playing town this year? I'm, I'm against regi uh, hosting regionals. Um, you know, I, I've entertained the idea of the number one seed hosting four teams, but I think you, you're going to run into possible um, building.
problems, you know, with the, you know, having the, uh, you know, the number one team being able to host four teams, you know, as far as locker rooms and, and it being a, a good, uh, you know, a good experience for the student athletes. Um, I like the process we have, um, you know, uh, I don't think it's an issue in the East. Um, I think finding the site, the correct sites in the West is, it's been a struggle, I think the last 10 years. Um, but, um, the, the, the bottom line is if we were to fill out the paperwork instead of Brown to host that regional, um, by rule, we would have been put there. Um, if Notre Dame would have won our league championship, they would have been put there. Uh, they, they would have been in South Bend. Um, I, I like, I, you know, I'm, I'm just for it being a great experience for the student athletes. Um, I'm for having people in the stands. I'm for um, it being a special time of the year. Um, and I think you, you battle all year long to get to that spot. Um, I think there should be neutrality, you know, as, as far as, um, you know, it being a, um, you know, you're getting placed by a committee. Jeff. Uh, this is for the players, Jeff Cox, SB Nation. I know it's been a long time, but can you talk about, obviously, the first game, you know, you guys lost pretty bad to BU, then you came back and beat them on the road. What were what was the biggest difference, you know, from game one to game two in that series? Russ. I think for us early on was uh, kind of finding our identity. Uh, every year is a new year, and I think coming in, we kind of struggled out the gate of, of bringing it both nights. and. Uh, Friday night, we just uh, at home, we just didn't have, have our game, uh, weren't playing our, our style of hockey. And I think Saturday we got back after it and, and uh, were able to gr uh, grit out a win there. I mean, it's, it, was, it was a while ago. I mean, we know that this is a new game, a new stage, and uh, I'm looking for the opportunity. Shane? Uh, yeah, I think like Ross said, uh, it was about finding our identity. Uh, they kind of, you know, they took it to that, took it to us that first night. But um, you know, that second night we rebounded, and that's kind of been our philosophy all year. Uh, you know, it's kind of happened all year. Like it's been down uh, Friday nights. We haven't come out the way we wanted, but Saturday night we've been able to rebound. And you know, I think that was one of those times. But um, you know, going in this game, we just gotta, we just gotta play our game. Nick. Uh, yeah, we uh, definitely didn't have our ga our game the our f the first time we played them on Friday. But I thought we bounced back well Saturday and uh, took it to them more. Rich. Johnson, Boston Herald. Nick, uh, Nolan, um, uh, uh, his name is Mark. We were talking about your assist last night. Were you just seeing the ice really well? Yeah. I, well, the, the first assist, I was just going to the net, and I got a piece of it. Uh, Noel did most of the work, digging it out and finding, finding the loose puck. Uh, and then Mark... <laughs> Mark was just wide open in front, and I just saw him and gave it to him. Okay, Nancy. Nancy Marapiece, Boston Globe. Nate, is there any relationship between um, Providence's uh, current situation and, like, the 85 team? I mean, did you think about having anybody come back and talk to these kids or, you know, Terrari or show them film or anything like that? Uh, no, we didn't show any film. Um, I, I did have a... a one gentleman from that team um, reached out to me, and we were, we were kind of trying to work it out, and things just kind of got a little too hectic. Um, we want to keep it simple right now, Nancy. We want to, we want to focus on us. Um, you know, I, th this is a great experience as far as the Frozen Four, but all along we've kind of said, you know, let, let, let our families, um, you know, soak in all the festivities. Let them have the experience. We're focused on the ice. We want to be focused on the game, and, and that's kind of been the message uh, – that we've tried to get across to the guys, and I think the guys have done a terrific job. I was really pleased to come in the locker room after the game last night, and there weren't, you know, there weren't guys jumping around. There weren't guys, you know, they were sitting in their stalls uh, drinking a Gatorade or Powerade. Sorry, Powerade. Um, and um, you know, they were just saying, "All right, coach, what's the agenda? What's next?" You know, so we've tried to kind of take the that uh, business-like approach. Tim Healy, Sports on Earth. Nate, when you took the job four years ago, did four years seem like a reasonable timetable to get here? You know, I, I didn't put a timetable on it. Um, uh, I've just, I've never believed in that. I think that's when you, you know, I think that's when you can get in trouble when you, when you set up expectations or false expectations. I think that's when you set up big downs. 
uh, you know, try not to get too high, not too low. You just try to get better one week at a time, uh, one month at a time, one year at a time. Um, just grind away. Just keep finding ways to get better. And, and if you take enough little steps, big things can happen. Uh, but, you know, that being said, we realized we got, we got some bounces to get here. You know, as we mentioned, we got to play in Providence. Um, uh, we got to play against a Miami team that was probably without two of their best forwards. Um, so, um, you know, you, you don't know sometimes when those opportunities are going to arise. You just put your head down and, and, um, and try to keep getting better. Further questions? Everybody got what they need? Okay, great. Guys, thanks very much. Best of luck. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. kind of leaves you like, your stomach, yeah, you're just like, you feel sick, you're like, it's funny how like, that does to you, like, because you're just a fan, you know, it's like, one thing is you're playing, but, yeah, it's tough. You get the bosses much, or the bounce? Uh, I mean, the bounce is gross, you know, you need to come up and play, but, yeah. everything you spend time on is kind of, eventually not much, it's just, it's a long year, it's, it's a long year, you got so much, the few days you have off, you try to get home, what do you, you try to, uh, just rest up. You got people here? Yeah, my mom, dad, and my yeah. little sister, yeah. and, Mike, uh, and Mike Hudson. Cool. So I'm going to trip out. So my, uh, my son's trying to get a ticket out to, uh, to make it tomorrow. So. Is that right? Yeah, he's trying to make it tomorrow. That's because they're probably tickets are down here. For yeah, no. Oh, that, all right. Yeah, I think we're out of chance. Yeah, I think so. Right? Yeah, like even my other, some other families, like, they're trying to book flights, but then after that, like, buy a ticket, too. Like, you gotta, you know, support your family. Well, I know. Like, yeah. Thank you.